such a mess. Uh. Now that we've had success on bulkhead seven, so this guy that gives the support to the overhead for the owner's cabin and the guest cabin, the aft areas. Now that we've had success with that over on the port side, which is the guest hall, I have moved over to the owner's side, the important one. As you can see, I have laid out the lines already to where that is, where it's perpendicular. What I've also done is did just basically it's a little quick mold for our drains for the hatches. Now the way the deck is shaped, I've been able to kind of mimic that with our gutter to make sure that all that water is even going to flow in the proper direction. It's not going to build up in this recessed hatch area, which eventually would allow it to pour down into us. Basically all it does is it goes right here. So here's our hatch opening. It goes in there. And then what it allows me to do is drill drain holes in this area of the hatch, either area there, which will drain into here and then go overboard. What I've done is figured out where this is going to go. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're hiding that in the bulkhead itself. It's going to become part of the bulkhead. This is uh, two layers of 1208. Uh, so there's chop strand in this. I have marked where that opening is going to be, where this is going to bond into here. And the next step now is to drill the drain that's going to go through the hole and decor that area. And what I'll do is I'll fill that back in to make sure that there's going to be no water that can leak into the hole itself. We'll bond this in a place, glass it all around, and then we can start putting in that bulkhead a little bit more. Okay, it's aligned now, um, had a bit of a setback with, of course, try fitting it if it's perfect, uh, angle's all right. Once I put some resin on it, the thickened resin to, to hold it in place, it no longer was sitting plumb. So manipulated it, got it in place, it's all aligned. We're gonna let it uh, heat lamp go and let it cure. Then I can go through and sand back some of that uh, uh, filler that I put in. Um, where the tape is, fill that area and then the upper area and get that remainder prepped so that I can glass in a little bit and get that permanently in. As you can tell, Matt has gone pretty hardcore sanding a lot of these areas this morning. So we know we're not ready for primer yet, but instead of just trying to like feel our way around to see where high and low spots are, we are using the uh, Dicom Blue Liquid, which will then sand off and then whatever remaining blue spots we'll be able to see that still need to be filled. So hopefully only one more layer of primer after this instead of just guessing, or uh, filler, whatever that stuff is I've been working with for forever now. Pretty soon we'll have to go back to this chine with a strip of tape just to keep a distinct line as we add filler to the area. But for the moment, we're just trying to find the low spots of this wall.
it is time for what we hope is going to be our last coat of fairing here in kind of like the master head and shower. As you can see, Matt went through yesterday with both the sander and a long board once that uh, blue dicum had gone on to see where the low spots are. So what I'm going to do today is go back and fill those. Uh, likely I'm probably just going to do like a full pass, but concentrate on the areas that are still blue because those are low spots. And then we'll go back and sand that once more and see if we can get that high build primer in the rest of these areas too. So right now, the only place that has stayed is the very forward bulkhead of our shower here, which is still looking very beautiful. And hopefully like basically working our way aft, we can have this all primed within the next week. Fingers crossed. Wanted to show the conduit runs under the stairs on, this is the guest, guest berth. Right here is the galley counter that we showed before. You can kind of see how we ran those. And what it is, is there are two, these are two inch conduits that are running from this area, going straight through into, you can kind of see this, this space back here that's going to allow me to run from side to side, so transverse um, from there. And then I have two, this is just wet resin right now, and then two other pieces that come down on an angle, which are going to allow me to run in through this bulkhead into the aft section. So that is going to be two other places where we'll have uh, the ability to run our major electrical, so the big items. And then down here in this lower section, there's another two. Um, these are both uh, two and a quarter inch holes or all four of those are two and a quarter inch holes. Um, and that will be for water running aft. We're gonna have the engine back here and we'll actually have a water heater back here. So we do need the ability to run water one direction and another. And uh, then like the AC lines most likely will be running through there as well through the other uh, tube. But just wanted to kind of show you how those conduits are getting ran and it's all going to make more sense when we do that hybrid system install. And with the LED lights, we want them so they're recessed within there so you can't see that strip below there. What I've done is to do that, I've taken our one inch piece, just ran a router down here, fill it in and just running a table saw down it to clean off that edge and give me something that's going to eventually, once I sand it and prime it and paint it, it'll be actually a nice surface to bond the, uh, the LED strip lights to. And here's kind of the finished profile. What it's gonna do is go right up like this. So I'll get bonded and be our edge there. I'll round out the top and put another layer of glass on this, but you can kind of see where it's gonna get cut off. You can kind of see how that fits now. And it gives me the little channel where I can put the LED lights, recesses those, gives me a nice firm edge here. Um, I think it's gonna, that will actually work out just fine and look nice and finished. We shall see. This trim piece is all bonded on now, rounded over the edge so I can glass that. Um, we're still not sure what radius we're gonna do on this. Um, I, so I did it with just with three eighths. We did want to talk about uh, what we're doing for the uprights here. Those are 
gonna be that same coring, so again, it mimics that style that we've done around the rest of the boat. And on the back side of it, and I haven't done this piece yet, I am running a piece of uh, tubing, uh, PVC, kind of a conduit type of thing, so I can run wire through it. It's not as important on this side because I can get to it from the back, but we're still doing it nonetheless. Over on the, the opposite side of the galley though, that is going to be very important because there's no other way to access into where that LED light is actually gonna be running. So we'll be able to run the wire through this, um, up from under the countertop, uh, through the countertop area, and into that back area. So it should work out well. And then the other thing is just the, the switch to be able to turn those things on and off. Um, I have been experimenting with some things that I've gotten, some smart switches now, which are kind of wireless switches. It allows you to not have to run the wires, um, but they're also things like motion sensitive and that kind of stuff. And I can program them for different times and all that kind of thing. Uh, very, very smart setup. I've been getting them on uh, Alibaba um, from China and they're like, five dollars a piece and they look like they're really well done so i'll just keep playing with those and see how that turns out but that is kind of how i plan to do a lot of this wiring on the system is to do that with some of these remote switches light switches specifically because it allows me to not have to drill through these bulkheads that i have um, and run wire down into the most appropriate location on elements our aluminum boat we did everything that was push button above your head and built into the headliner and that's how you turn the lights on and off. Um, on this boat, I didn't necessarily want that. I want switches in what we're all used to a normal position about uh, waist height. Yeah, that's how I'm running the conduit through here. I have set it up right now. You can see this is just a blank, um, roughly done, but filled in, routed it out, filled in both sides. So I can then roll over these edges a little bit and when I mount them in there, I'll give a nice surface for paint. Um, those are going up again, right, basically like there and there on either side uh, to kind of finish this off and give that same thickness to the edges here around. Do you grill? You enjoy being outside again? Where are you going? Jimmy, good girl. Don't you go running away. Just because I came over here to take a picture of you. This countertop edge piece, if you look from the side here, the profile, you can see it's not square at the top. It's not flat. Uh, so now what I need to do is cut this back so then it is on the proper, basically, level um, with still keeping the full height over here of that. We're, we're not sure if we're gonna cap it with anything. Um, we may put like a wood piece on top of it. But then if you also look, you can see that this piece is actually level. Um, the backrest part of the foam, I never really tried leveling that when I installed it. It was just get it in place and get it bonded in there properly. So that same process of cutting this to the right angle is also gonna make it so it should be nice and and uh, level and square here. So for this, I'm gonna end up using the track saw. I gotta first find my angle with this and see what, uh, how I need to cut it. And then I'll set up the track on here and I should be able to rip right down it and hopefully get a nice edge. The next process after that is gonna be rounding over the edges again and glassing this top piece. So it's got not necessarily strength, but just to make sure when we paint it, it's not going to crack um, later on if there's any flexing in this. some reason I thought the saw bent this way so it kicked the blade out this direction it's actually the exact opposite uh, yeah so the saw actually tilts over the base this way so I need to figure out how to get it flipped over and do this side to cut that direction instead Thank you. 
strike two. The saw physically can't ride on the track because the motor will hit there. I might be doing this the old fashioned way then and taking a hand plane and rough cutting it, hand planing, and then probably long boarding it level. Urgh. Damn it. I broke out my other circular saw, which I can use that just as a straight edge. So to get my saw blade angle, all I'm doing is just using digital angle finder, putting it along the edge, 12 degrees. So simple, easy. That will get us to exactly 90 here and a nice level surface. And after we cut this and glass it and all that kind of stuff, fairing it, um, I can make sure it's, it's exactly where it's supposed to be. Well, so you won't be able to hear me well because you might be able to see there's a ton of dust in the air right now, so I am not taking my mask off for you. <laughs> well, it did exactly what I didn't want it to do. The track was bending a little bit in the middle, um, and then it actually started slipping down on this edge. And so I lost my straight line, which means I need to fair this in now and go through and block it in to get a nice square edge. Again, exactly what I didn't want to have to do. I thought I was going to be able to do this with my track saw, which does much, much better job of that. You don't have to push the uh, pressure on it, uh, on the track itself to run it straight. And it's just so efficient, smooth the system. The circular saw does not do the same thing when running against a straight edge. Dang it. This is supposed to be an easy project today, and had the track actually fit right, it would have been a simple project, but of course it didn't, and now it's going to need a little bit of work to get that right. Pandemonium